Welcome to the Wow Pod with Fredrik Hauge, Bellona, and Paul Jave Nilsson, Vice President Innovation, and Henrik Badin, CEO of Wow Asa. <laughs> There's a lot of talk about the EU <laughs> and the Green Deal that aims for no net emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050. Fredrik, do you really believe that will happen? Uh, that is not the most important part because the most important thing is that we will work every day that this will succeed and many others will do so too. So for industry and business to not take into consideration that this will happen will be a huge risk taking because this, I think this will change a lot and we already see the effect uh, especially on the finance market, even if not all uh, the, the new regulations are set yet, and it's still quite rough lobbyism and campaigning down in Brussels on these topics, we see that finance market already takes this into consideration and, and uh, f- in a way from looking at environmental issues and topics to be a threat, to be new possibilities and, and uh, the green taxonomy is a very important part of that. Because you, you know a, a lot about this because you are actually down in Brussels uh, being active. You, you actually have a job down there, uh, don't you? Yeah, we, we are, Bologna Foundation are employed now around, I think we have 15, 16 people now working in the European Union mm. and with offices in, in Germany and Holland and, and London and, and Brussels. And we work very close with the European Commission to make the framework and the regulation. And we see what's going on from inside uh, every day now. Uh, it's big lobby campaigns on different topics. Uh, and some places we are a little bit worried, but in general, this is going to be a big, big change. Because commissions, and, and I think Norwegians have a very big problem to understand that. But for European Union to reduce the import of oil is a huge effect on their economy. So they have many, many benefits also from an economic perspective. And, and more and more analysis sees this not as a, a problem for the industry anymore, but a possibility. Yeah, because you, you talked about, uh, we mentioned the EU's taxonomy. Can you explain a bit about that? What is that? Now, the point is that they want us to have a different approach when it comes to how uh, financing are done. Uh, this is settling the uh, rules for state aid uh, heavily. So I think many people uh, will be a little bit shocked on, on what is not going to be allowed in the future to support from the government. Because there is still a lot of subsidies of fossil fuel, of emission uh, infrastructure. And this is to gradually uh, turn away from this by using the financial mechanisms uh, that that is lined up in this green taxonomy. Yeah, because because uh, what we're talking about here is uh, to succeed, uh, both businesses and the governments, EU and the local governments, and so on, need to play together on the same uh, on the same pitch. Well, what's extremely important here is to create a kind of predictable uh, political and regulatory framework for many of, of the companies in inventing new technology and new solutions is in fact uh, as big risk as the technology risk is the political and legal framework. And the green taxonomy gives a kind of predictability that we have not seen uh, on these uh, topics before. Uh, and, and, and it's the politician's job to regulate, yeah? It's the business uh, job to, to go green by black numbers to end up in, in making new solutions. And the framework put forward by the European Commission is balancing this uh, in a much better way than earlier. So, mm-hmm. so it's going to be a really big, big change for many people. Yeah. But you, you, the, the taxonomy is, of course, kicking in now for, 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 for the industry. Uh, 
and you see that you know uh, access to capital cost of capital matters if you go sort of in in the green direction or not um, but you know as 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 you saw uh, we talked about in the in the introduction the the capital market has already responded to it you know before the taxonomy actually kicked in and that you know, see there's so much capital are sort of moving in this direction it's it's actually as they said that now you certainly are are able to to invest in 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 companies uh because there has actually been too few uh, opportunities for 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 investors to move in this direction but now of course more and more companies are coming and that explains also the the drive on the oslo stock exchange uh, and the euronext growth you see that more and more uh, companies are, are 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 listing and mm -hmm. of course you see the a lot of interest but actually you uh, represent the wow asa which is uh, actually a unique company within this uh, <laughs> uh, yeah we have we have been yeah. uh, we have been listed since 2014 and we have been in the game for, for many years mm -hmm. um, but you have black numbers yeah, yeah not many of the environmental companies do have that I no think. yeah f yeah for sure and, and that has been important for us uh, to 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 be profitable and and to demonstrate that we are uh, that we are growing and sort of having a, a profitable growth. And of course, over these year, years, we have the, 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 the let's say the the net profits and the net proceeds have actually been moved into technology development. And uh, you know, I think we're investing uh, in in this business to also be become sort of more and more relevant uh, going forward forward as well. Yeah, but uh, one in interesting thing that you've done is uh, uh, Wow Industries which is an incubator uh, of new businesses yeah it, it is it, it, it is to to look at uh, you know in some of these new markets that we're we're, we're entering uh, there are a demand for co2 neutral or climate neutral energy uh, there are available bass um, biomass and, and waste but there are nobody to take that position to build this type of infrastructure and we see that in in some of these markets, we we it's it's it makes sense for us to move forward with sort of build on operate. So so uh, it's uh, Wow Industries being that incubator. Now we're we're moving towards the metallurgic industry with that type of concept, but it's down the road. Uh, we're we're looking at other industry verticals where it makes sense also to take that type of position to you know to roll out technology. Mm. But um, if we look at the Norway, you know, we've always been in the forefront uh, of the environmental... Uh, oh, you don't agree? I see, I see it on your face. <laughs> okay, so Norway, is, is, we, we are not the uh, best in the class. I think that's... Um, um, we, we are quite schizophrenic in Norway <laughs> on this, yeah? yeah? And and in some topics, we are good. Uh, in other topics, we think we are very good, which is... Uh, a big obstacles to become better mm -hmm. um, and I think when it comes to innovation to to create space for smaller companies to grow has been difficult in Norway because we're so used to that the big oil companies is going to be a big part of our economy and so on and, and the challenge here is that if you look at it's invested today uh, 1,000 to 1,500 billion US dollars into dirty industry every year. Mm. And we need uh, to invest around 2,600, 800 billion US dollars into clean industry and energy production every year up to 2050 if we are going to succeed. Uh, there is not enough investment possibilities for all this money at this stage. And that's why it's so important to have this uh, innovation to to understand that uh, very much of this will come from down under. People do they have access to information through the internet? Through you can you can sit wherever and become a very good battery expert, yeah, because you have all the access. Mm -hmm. And this is where we are not so good because we are used to fill up uh, the the the. The valley uh, with with death uh, pilot projects, <laughs> uh, because so so we have we have to do something with our thinking on innovation and and the respect for starting up new companies yeah. in Norway. We are not good there. But the good thing now is that if you look at the financial markets, they are going green. 
you know and uh, so so uh, many of the yeah. black they, they start to go green yeah yeah but uh, you know but many of the black companies the oil companies they have to think differently and we have a lot of competence within those companies you know technical competence and and everything that's now thinking more and more green which probably could be a boost for for norway and uh, the uh, the economy uh, going forward i should believe and innovation I, I mean, yeah. already now we see a transfer of competence from oil companies and supplier of, of the oil industry uh, with competent people into the, the, the green business. Uh, we in, in WoW have benefited from this big time with a lot of, of, of clever people with, with a background from, uh, from a black <laughs> background in, in, in fossil uh, fuel, so to mm. say. Mm. And of course, the, the knowledge, the experience is, is very valuable uh, in this transition, for mm. sure. Mm. But, but still, uh, I also come from, from 20 years of, of development and research in, in, in oil and gas. Um, and of course, in that industry, uh, historically, we have had a much better schemes for, for funding and, 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 and so on than it's been in the green industry. But mm. now we see a change yeah. in the last, I would say, maybe two years. <laughs> yeah. and, and you're actually combining this with uh, some of the best know-how from, from France as well. You know, Ab Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there, there we now have the, the, the big team uh, in, in France, particularly working now on, on, uh, on base fractions and valorization of, 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 uh, of plastic waste, for instance, which is, of course, uh, fossil carbon. But how could we ensure that we we use uh, those uh, already produced plastics uh, in in the best way uh, there we use our paralysis technology yeah. the same way. And, and you have agreements with uh, repsol which you know uh, helping them uh, absolutely uh, yes, I mean, it's yeah. uh, I, I can feel in you know it, it's yeah. it's interesting to see that we have we have our approach to help sort of the 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 industry decarbonize you know um, has been successful lately you know now we have we have large industry players at the table and and lately uh, in october uh, repsol uh, announced sort of their uh, you know they were one of the first one in the oil and gas industry to commit to us you know net zero emission by 2050 and when they in october announced their sort of pathway between 25 to to 30 of becoming 20 percent CO to neutral they announced uh, a cooperation with us uh, to look at their infrastructure in first and foremost in in in, in Spain, mm. at their sort of refineries and and, and uh, to to replace sort of their consumption of natural gas and uh, and and uh, later on, uh, ArcelorMittal, the largest uh, steel producer in the world, came uh, and announced now on in, in January a cooperation with us to build a first facility in Rodange, Luxembourg. Uh, to uh, to decarbonize their operations by replacing their consumption of uh, of, of natural gas, uh, you know, thirty percent with with syngas, mm -hmm. converting uh, you know waste and waste streams into syngas with our our technology. So, so it, it it it's interesting to see you know that that we are we are you are becoming relevant for for large industry and that's yeah, that's and our ambitions. And and in terms of of, of knowledge, expertise, competence, and when we now meet those uh, like Repsol in meetings with Repsol, we meet their experts, uh, very knowledgeable, uh, competent people, uh, and uh, and we have to respond uh, at the level they are at. Yeah. So so to, to really bring in the competence to be a credible uh, partner with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's essential but, for us. But when, when when you work with these big companies and, and what is crucial? Does it work the the uh, with the governments and the businesses? Does that uh, collaboration work, or are there something missing that the, the today uh, today it, it works in the sense that that they they have committed mm -hmm. on on a pathway towards sort of CO two neutrality and you know to become you know, 20, 30, 50 percent uh, CO, CO2 neutral, you know, in, 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 in intermediate goals until yeah. 2050. Mm -hmm. And and uh, why 
I think the EU Green Deal, uh, with the ambition to you know to make these the European um, economy CO two neutral uh, within twenty fifty, have sort of played an important role. There's a lot of incentives in place to to help the industry moving that direction. And on top of that, of course, the CO two, the CO two taxation, and the, you know the risk of not going in the, the the you know in the green direction for these companies. You know it's 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 why they. So in a way, it it starts playing out nicely you mm. see you see that the industry is responding to this and and uh, you know and for us you know to look at at Oslo Metal, for example they have they have uh, 73 sites in Europe where they are producing crude steel uh, high temperature industry that today are are the only way for them to 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 heat their processes there they, they, they need gas and and of course uh, they need to figure out how can they become 20, uh, 20 or 30% CO2 neutral within the next 10 years. Mm. So, so it's, it's, it's very interesting to sit down with them, to look at their infrastructure and see how, you know, pyrolysis technology could be a part of that, that pathway. Mm. Ferrik, is it the European Commission or the Norwegian government who is driving the, the green transition? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like to say that I'm happy Norway is not a member of the European Union because I'm afraid that the petroholic country of Norway is going to <laughs> damage uh, the EU climate policy. But I think I think we must remember here that we're dealing with some companies that are bigger than states, and uh, that's why this, the European Union is is the only one who has the kind of power to regulate these kind of topics. Uh, we have been working for years in, in Brussels and it's it's divided uh, because you 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 really get a hard resistance from the German coal industry a uh, lot of uh, we see how the oil and gas industry is fighting now even if if the the slogan starts to be better we see still a heavy I think we, we have registered more than uh, 1500 uh, gas lobbyists now uh, in in Brussels uh, when it comes to the the green taxonomy they're not doing good. But what we see is uh, uh, increased understanding. And I, I think it's important to remember when, when the Paris Accord was signed in 2015, it started a process in each country where they have to monitor, they had to come up with plans, they had to report the plans, and they risk that the targets will be tightened up. And during the years when the different governments have started to do this analysis, started to get in the background figures from the industry, it's become more and more clear what kind of huge task this is. And I think, for example, from a topic like carbon capture and storage, this process has, has because the numbers doesn't go up if you don't use that kind of technology, which could also be implemented at, at the Vos technology to go carbon negative. Mm. Uh, there is an absolutely different understanding coming up now with what this means. What we see, though, is that it's not always the acceptance to also take the environmental consequences of what this green acceleration and the green taxonomy is going to cause. Because this big change in state doesn't come with other kind of environmental consequences. And, and, and therefore, we also see that parts of the environmental movement now starts to be against solutions that I think is absolutely crucial to fulfill. We see it in carbon capture and storage. We see big challenges on it come when it comes to biomass. Uh, how are we going to have a sustainable feedstock mm -hmm. into both this technology? Mm -hmm. uh, so so the, the need for facts mm -hmm. and the need of understanding that this is not black and white when I started to break into companies and dig up barrels with dangerous waste. It was very easy to say, oh, bad. But it's always much more difficult to tell what you're going to do with that waste. And, and, and you see it when it comes to mining, that's necessary for electrification. You see the resistance against windmills and so on. And this is uh, something that we need to deal with because we start to get with us the finance sector but we are losing the public acceptance to take the consequences of the green shift. So that's a big and huge topic now. 
And I think I don't think it's you know competition between technologies and, and solutions. You know, it's it's not either or. Uh, to to decarbonize or to reduce the CO two emissions, um, as as the plan is, you you have to let's say find ways to outphase the fossil fossil fuels. Hmm. So it's a combination of CO two neutral solutions and CO two negative solutions. Hmm. You need to you need to. Uh, help industries uh, and I think that we have perhaps a, a low hanging fruit for them now because th this is something we can start with today to help them to, to become CO2 neutral but of course we need to we need to both sort of we, we also need to take carbon out of the CO2 cycle as well so you need uh, you know you need capture and storage as well but you know you should uh, you, you, know, you should support all all sort of processes towards sort of a, a net zero future and that's one of the things why we work with Wolf. Because if they can supply biochar or biocarbon to the melting industry, uh, to aluminium plants, producer of mangan or silicium, or, and they put on carbon capture and storage, this technology is a part of carbon negative solutions where we enable an infrastructure from the industrial perspective to also remove CO2 in the future. And that's why also Bologna Foundation is working so much with new ways of producing biomass, like we do in the desert with seawater or our big project on seaweed farming and so on, because we really need to also find new ways to produce this biomass. Coming years will be a lot of biomass available for wool, because there will be new waste streams of biomass accessible. But to scale this up, we need also to take care of that in the future. But of course, as we said, you, you can start with CO2 neutral solutions until you can you can get a, you know this 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 projects of of of, of CO2 uh, capture and and, and storage mm. or carbon capture and storage. Mm. But there's no excuse not to start today. It's not so. so and, and of course, the good thing is that we see the industry is is responding and. And in, 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 in many markets, we see, you know, in many industry verticals, we see clients are coming to us with, with uh, you know, requesting our technology. But in some others, you know, we need to take an active role. We need to capture that market. And, and I think uh, we have a huge, you know, a great opportunity to do that now. And, and of course, we have the capital market with us. We have even the banks, you know. And it was an interesting uh, ha having sort of discussions with the banks in Norway today. They are they're looking at their you know lending portfolio, uh, and and they are also hit by the taxonomy. Mm -hmm. You know they see that DNB for example, how much of the oil and gas industry have they financed, and how much of the, these green initiatives are they financing? So it makes sense for them also. They have to move capital towards the green 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 side of it, and uh, you know it's 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 a, it's a good environment for us uh, to to do this now. Mm -hmm. And I also think we, now we have this uh, initiative for uh, certifying uh, the, the processes because there has been a lot of, uh, of, of lack of understanding and, and rules and regulations. Now we are heavily involved in the European Biochar <coughs> Industry Consortium in which we try to push for certification systems for carbon sink uh, from biochar, for instance, so that uh, clients, investors, uh, could really know that the the char that is produced and applied is is really contributing to uh, to the carbon negative solution. Guys, we're closing in on the end here, but uh, just one final question to to you, Frederick. Um, uh, if I understand correctly, uh, the EU, uh, the European Commission, they are actually <laughs> doing a good job now <laughs> with the Green Deal and everything, and the taxonomy. Uh, we have uh, what we call an EE. A agreement uh, in Norway, better known as EVS Samtalen, and uh, there is an election here in Norway uh, in September, uh, and uh, we've already uh, heard talks about uh, EVS Samtalen, uh, the EE agreement uh, being uh, stopped. Uh, how will that impact if that happens uh, on the, on what happens within uh, the climate uh, change? Now, from my perspective, this is one of the worst things that could happen. Because it's so often that we, instead of starting to use our time to convince the Norwegian politicians, we spend our time in Brussels. 
and get it as a regulation there and then Norway just have to accept it. Mm. So, so I have my t-shirt, I love the AOS agreement uh, because Norway is a nice little selfish petroleum country. Need this adjustment from the European Union.